yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The attack yesterday on the Hawaiian Island has caused severe damage. I regret to tell you that very many American lives have been lost. In addition, American ships have been reported torpedoed on the high seas between San Francisco and Honolulu. As Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, I have directed that all measures be taken for our defense, that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Lexington, nicknamed the Blue Ghost, is one of the last surviving SX-class aircraft carriers from the U.S. Navy that survived World War II. The ship began construction in 1941 and was finished and commissioned on February 17, 1943. The ship was then loaded up and sent into action in the Pacific War, where it fought against Japanese Imperial forces that were allied with the Germans. The ship was, and still is, absolutely massive. It's around 910 feet long, could carry around 2,600 officers and enlisted men, and could house up to 110 airplanes at once. The Lexington served in many, many battles, and it would be almost impossible to list them all and give descriptions here of all of the history that she saw while in the war. One of the first known casualties connected to the Lexington was the death of 1939 Heisman Trophy winner Niall Kinnock, who had played football for the Iowa Hawkeyes before enlisting in World War II. In 1943, during the ship's initial voyage, Niall and other pilots were conducting training flights and exercises off of the Lexington's deck. However, while in flight, the aircraft Niall was piloting developed a major oil leak and plummeted down into the sea some four miles from the ship. Neither Niall nor his plane were ever recovered from the ocean, and to this day, he and his plane remain lost at sea. In December of 1943, the Lexington was hit by a torpedo fired by Japanese forces during a nighttime attack. In total, nine people were killed in the blast that struck the Fantail and Chief Petty Officer's mess room of the ship, and yet four men survived, reportedly because they had all been sitting on a couch, which absorbed the effect of the explosion. In total, the Lexington saw action in around 34 battles or actions during World War II. She saw combat in places like Guam, Hong Kong, Saigon, and even Iwo Jima. During this time period, the enlisted men serving on the ship shot down 387 enemy planes, destroyed 635 planes on the ground, sank 588,000 tons worth of enemy vessels, and sunk and or damaged 497,000 gross tons of merchant ships. 
While these enemies may not have died upon the Lexington, their spirits may be around as the people who killed them came from and resided here on the ship. On November 5, 1944, something terrible happened aboard the ship. On that day, a Japanese kamikaze pilot, aka a pilot who deliberately crashes their plane into an enemy in a suit strike crashed into an upper portion of the ship. The crash caused an immense explosion of flames and took the lives of 50 U.S. Navy sailors and injured a further 152 people. To this day, the exact spot where the kamikaze pilot crashed into the ship is marked with the Japanese rising sun flag in order to educate visitors further on the matter. The Lexington's use wasn't limited to World War II, however. She also saw action in the war after the 1958 Taiwan Straits Crisis and the Cuban Missile Crisis. However, in the late 1960s, the Lexington transitioned from an active combat use military aircraft carrier to a training carrier that trained future pilots that were set to head over to Vietnam. On August 18, 1980, the Lexington also became the first aircraft carrier in United States naval history to have women stationed aboard as crew members. In total, roughly 370 different people died aboard the USS Lexington during her time spent in action. Some died during the torpedo strike I just mentioned, others died during the kamikaze strike I touched on, and many others died from the bullets raining down on the deck from enemy aircrafts. There were also many that died from accidents and illnesses aboard the ship. One unlucky chief petty officer, for example, accidentally backed up into a speeding propeller and was immediately cut down to shreds. Another death occurred when an onboard electrician working alone accidentally electrocuted herself. With so many deaths on board and so much history, the ship has to be haunted, right? Well, as you're about to find out, there are so many hauntings aboard the Lexington that we couldn't even tell you about all of them if we tried. So let's go back to early in the day that we visited the ship as we first pulled in to Corpus Christi, Texas. Okay, everybody. We're here tonight in Corpus Christi, Texas. I've never been to Corpus Christi before, the body of Christ. I have not either. Cool town. Tonight, we have one of the most haunted places in all of Texas. Oh shit, do I need to go ahead? Oh, I don't think you could. This is one of the most famous haunted places in the entire United States, and it is easily the biggest place we've ever investigated in the history of the channel, the USS Lexington. Let's see, here we go. Holy fucking shit. Oh, man. Massive, dude. Holy Christ. Wow, Crazy, dude. look at this axis. This is like out of a fucking movie. This is like, like this <laughs> right here. What the hell, man? Look at this thing, dude. Look at the ship. Dude, and they're allowing us to come up the actual ramp on this. Wow, yeah. this is like kind of scary driving on this. Hey, <laughs> you know? Wow, welcome aboard the I've USS got shivers, Lexington. Man. I'm guessing Whoa. park. Whoa. <laughs> here we go, baby. Damn, this is so sick. Yeah. We got here and then unloaded all of our stuff, and then he was like, might as well just drive up there. That would have been a terrible walk. That like, would have been actually. <laughs> that would have been hell. So, yeah, we're gonna unload and here we are at the wow. Blue Ghost. <laughs> you guys, wow! <laughs> you guys don't, it's hardly enough. I yeah. can't even speak. It's like, <laughs> wait till we're up there. Yeah, okay, well, uh, we're gonna get going. This is crazy. <laughs> so, standing out here waiting to begin the investigation, I've just been looking at the ship and First of all, I can't believe how massive this ship is. It's definitely our biggest location to date. But also, wow, how historic is this? How crazy is this? This is gonna be seriously an unforgettable investigation and, and unforgettable, did I say unforgettable? Unforgettable. Unforgettable investigation, unforgettable video. Yeah, if you guys wanna see us do more big locations like this, make sure to like the video right now and leave me a comment below letting me know where you'd like to see us go. Because the likes and the comments help the videos do better, they help more people see them, they help us grow the spooky family, and it's all because of y'all. So thank you so much, and what a way to close out my time here in Texas, aboard the Blue Ghost. <laughs> I definitely feel something just, it's like a, it's almost like a vibe that just kind of comes off of the ship. A feeling that you get just looking at this thing. Like, 
There are mysteries on this ship. There's history on this ship. And above all, there are ghosts on this ship. And I'm ready to find them. So, uh, hell yeah, everybody. Hell yeah. Thanks again to everyone online for watching the videos and supporting what we do here. It means the world to me. But, ooh, gives me the shivers. Watch these steps, dude. So, um, Bill was here with me and just set up the FLIR, the uh, trail camera, and we've got a static camera there. And the trail camera had all brand new batteries in it, and it just died. So, that's in a nutshell the story. But brand new batteries, or everything. I can't see here. Yeah, brand new batteries. I mean, makes no sense again. So, we've got some batteries. We gotta take this off. So, huh, that's a ton of batteries, yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> dead as a doornail. That's seriously so many batteries. But he, you, you've had it. Oh, yeah, many people yeah, have yeah. had it happening down here. That's it, it's not surprising whatsoever. But all of them gets to be an expensive uh, process. I mean, it surprises me when it happens, but if you're not the first, uh, no, no. What we'll do, let's just make sure this is uh, gonna work here. Batteries, there's one, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it's gonna be an expensive two weeks. <laughs> and there was a, a shadow person, Bill was saying, right through here. And I'm focused on the, oh, that moved a little bit. I'm focused on the door there, that moved a little bit on me. So, and that's still recording. I can even put well, let's not assume I mean that, but I mean, it's like, what in the heck? Let's just make sure we don't have an error here. You never know. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Wow. Okay. Well, those are all brand new, too, that we just checked. Yeah, from what you said, it started up just fine, but then quit. It seems like it, like, fried the entire camera. You know what I mean? Cause it's just not turning on. What in the heck? We, we were just using this too, the whole way down. Oh look, there it is. Okay, this is what it did before, and then it shut off. It no, look at it, 100%. That is very strange. So do I want to try to go to the video or what? Sure. This... I've never seen this issue. Unfortunately. Yeah, the camera's just I mean, fried. I, I think... Uh... It's like no power again. I'm sitting here smirking because I've seen this before, seen this act before. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just. I, yeah, I told you about the cameraman from, you know, and, and uh, my good buddy Jill from San Antonio. I mean, she was, yeah, it was happening all the time. This thing is just like. I'll just set this here. I just, just not touch it. it. Yeah, just let it just go. Let's see what happens. Can you turn your light off though? Uh, just to see if we're by chance. I mean, oh, it just clicked. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it's working. Wait a well, second. Oh, look at look at it's doing some. Oh, it's Instead doing. Open sesame. It's damn per shadow person. <laughs> it's 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 dead again. It's dead. That is so bizarre, man. I'll just go. I, I don't. I, I really don't know. Uh, let's leave it there. It came back on, and uh, nothing's actually on screen. Okay, we'll just, right. let's just leave it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna win. We're on the uh, forward deck of the uh, flight deck and 
it happens up here and all of the decks below this. Uh, anyway, we call him the angry chief. He's the chief petty officer that will come on out and he has a very, very angry look on his face. But he's a residual. He just stands there, look, growls at you, kind of uh, sneers at you, and then goes away. He's never hurt anybody, never done anything, but he's a residual. He probably couldn't do anything. But anyway, he's seen up here, and he's also seen mostly down on the main deck. Uh, we'll be probably be going there sometime, and hopefully maybe see him. And this is the gun, or the jet from Top Gun? Yeah, this is the jet from the Top, uh, top Gun. Uh, it's still got Maverick, it's got everything else. It, uh, when, when he got it, it, uh, it had been out in the desert for a while and, and uh, the paintwork went, went to hell. A pilot saw that and he took the tail number and called it in and found out that was in fact the same gun. He could basically make out some of the writing. <laughs> uh, is, this is the plane on top gun. We had a uh, training, this was a training carrier, and one of the pilots come in, panicked, or he did whatever, and he wound up crashing somewhere in this area and landed right on top of what our crash crew, killing five, and one of them was the first female fatality aboard here, a uh, young lady named Lisa Mayo. There's a film of it down below, but you can't really tell exactly where, but I mean, this whole area was on fire. Wow. Televised group, the guy goes group on here. Uh, came up here one night and I was listening to them on radio, and they were chasing a shadow person all over this place. They'd get on up to where they think he was, and of course he'd be gone. So they all of a sudden see something else. They chased him for about 10 or 15 minutes. If that's how shadow people are, they they're not there when you get there. That's where the that's where the, the Japanese flag up there. People get upset because we have a Japanese flag up there, but that depicts the area where a Japanese kamikaze pilot crashed into the ship. Uh, we've had a lot of fatalities here in the war, but that was the single worst. Uh, there were something like 47 people died that day, and there were others that were severely wounded, and some of those passed away in the following week. Uh, what the total number was, I don't know. I don't have information on that. But uh, that was that was pretty bad news. And that's the point of impact. Yes. Right there. Yeah. Besides the people that uh, were up there, you had uh, gun crews that lined up down here, and a lot of that stuff landed on the gun crews. I had a good friend. There was a pilot that was uh, getting ready to take off that day. And he said that he knew that there was incoming aircraft because he could hear the, the gunfire. Uh, but when the plane hit, Kamikaze hit, he said everything just autumn just came on fire. Of course, you got the aviation fuel going all over. The guy had a 500-pound bomb that went off, uh, so you can imagine the carnage. His plane caught fire, but he said he was able to jump out and escape with only minor burns. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you want to go up top? Yeah, we'll head on up to the navigation bridge. <laughs> you gotta be in shape to be on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> this is the chart house. This is where the navigator would work. The only thing I've had out of here was a volunteer was working in the navigation bridge and it was a quiet day, so he looked through here to see if anybody was coming, and he saw a full figure on the other side of the flaps there, but then when he turned around to look again, it, he was gone. <laughs> wow. Oh, jeez. Scare you? Yeah. <laughs> The actual bridge is out there, but this is the pilot house where they do the steering and whatnot. The only thing I've had in here was, and it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes you get just get a real barrage of K2 readings. But then other days there's nothing. Interesting. My name is Bill Miller. I'm a volunteer here aboard USS Lexington Museum on the Bay. 
I've been a volunteer for going on 17 years now. Retired Navy, uh, so I'm in my element here. That, that's why I'm here, because my wife said it's either the ship or... Anyway, this is how the wife keeps her sanity. Anyway, we're in the pilot house uh, on the bridges on the outside there. The ship itself was built. Uh, her birthday is February 17th, 1943. She's bit, built in Four River, Massachusetts. She was in the yards at the time. Yeah, that's radio. I can't. She was uh, in the, being built at the time of Pearl Harbor. There was a USS Lexington out there, a CV2 Lexington, but she sank. She was sunk at the Battle of Coral Sea in uh, 1942. But anyway, this ship and she was being built was supposed to be built as USS Cabot. However, when the CV2 Lexington sank. The people that were building this ship had built that ship, and so they petitioned the Secretary of the Navy to name this ship Lexington as well. That's why you'll see in World War II history, you'll see two Lexingtons, but then it also started a trend because you have two Midways, you have two Yorktowns, you have two Hornets on down the line. She came on out. Uh, normally it would take about five years to build a ship like this, but it took them 17 months because of the war going on. She uh, made it through the Panama Canal out to the Pacific, and she was the only blue aircraft carrier out there. The other aircraft carriers were all painted camouflage, but she was painted basic blue, which was the color of the day. Now it's haze gray, but it's, it was bluish back then. So when the Japanese attacked this ship, they knew exactly what ship they were attacking. Now they'd have planes come in, really messing up the ship. I mean, four times she was hurt so bad that they were confident that the ship was going to sink, that there was no way we could save her, but the crew saved her each and every time. Four times, Tokyo Rose claimed that they sank the ship, only have to come back later and say, my bad, you know, she's still there. And so after the fourth time, it was Tokyo Rose that claimed, named the ship the Blue Ghost, because we kept coming back from the dead. Can I ask you why you um, keep referring to the ship as she? It's a name of tradition. This goes back way time. Ships take a lot of work and so that the crews spend a lot of time on the ship. And so the ship's wives start referring to their husbands in the ship as the, the sailor's mistress. But anyway, that's it. she just traditionally known as she. Not a lot has happened here. I did mention the uh, full figure on the uh, other side of the, the air conditioning boundary that was there then not, uh, which kind of caught the, the volunteer up here working up here by surprise. There was one area that uh, if I go back out to the ladder going down, by the way, we don't have stairs on ships, we've got ladders. Go back to the ladder going down, it goes up several more decks, but it's all electronics areas. Sometimes it catches you by surprise because you'd be checking the ship after everyone's gone and you hear voices coming down from up there, but you go check and there's nobody up there. So it doesn't happen all the time, but it does sound like people working up there. The, the, the one that stands out to mind, I've, I've only seen one full-bodied apparition and that was for like two seconds, and that's one thing that you experience and it never goes away. But that happens. We've got tons of shadow people. Uh, I say tons of shadow people, now I can go in the entire investigation and I find a one. There's other times I'm walking down through the decks there and I can't get rid of them. You know, it's just, they keep looking around. It's, it's nothing nasty, it's nothing bad, but they keep looking at you around the corners and then you look back at them and then, then they go away. We have no demons on here. We have certain rules that we have to we require to be followed about uh, seances and whatnot because you can use spirit boxes all you want to on here but we don't allow any calling up anything that we don't know where it's coming from because we very family friendly on here and we, we strive to keep it that way but every now and again I, I do have pranksters I, I do really seriously have pranksters uh, especially if you're an attractive female keep in mind this is back in the day, and we had young sailors out there with an attractive young lady, and they're going to try to get her attention, and that does happen on here. And nothing bad. Uh, the worst thing, I think, the, the most intimate thing I ever had happen to a young lady was a butt pinch, but that doesn't happen very often. Most of the time, it's, it's a hair tug or uh, playing with the ear, something like that, but it, they're trying to get the young lady's attention. But they, they are playful. In the spirit world, there's a thing called a porting. It's where you have something there, then it's gone, only to reappear or not. We've had that happen. We had a blonde working here one time, nicely young lady, but she was forever getting messed with until finally 
she'd have enough of it, then she'd have to set the ground rules. But you tell them, you can't do that, stop doing that until I get done, and they'll, they'll stop. Uh, but you never know what these guys are going to do. Some nights you go through, through uh, the ship and nothing happens. Other times you, you got to tell them to, to slow down because you're not being able to write it all down. And, you know, you, get, you, you guys are going too fast, you got to slow down. So this area, um, what was the function for the ship, just to explain to people online? Well, this is where you steered the ship from. You had, uh, these are gyro uh, uh, compasses. These are electronic compasses. It uh, used to be in the old days, you, you sailed with the magnetic. We still have these up here for backups. Uh, the problem with magnetic is it took a lot of math mathematics and knowledge of where you were on the chart to be able to figure out where true north was. Whereas these are fed by gyroscopes, and so they take all that all the math out of there. They show you, by, because of a high power gyro, uh, where true north is. So we're able to steer with this, but in case these go, but then we can steer magnetic. But this is actually what's just what steers the ship, the helm. This is the Lee helm, which is the engine order telegraph. This one that shows the head one third, head two thirds, whatever. It just sends the, the command to the engine room on how fast to go. Wow. How about the Okay, around. the outside. This is where the officer of the deck and the junior officer of the deck. Now, this is an armored pilot house. It's, it's thick steel. Uh, these we cut in to make it even flow. But this used to be all armored in here. These are the portholes that would be shut. And you can see how thick that is. Wow. This is where the officer of the deck and the junior officer of the deck would, would be to uh, actually give the commands, figure out where you are, what the orders are, to give the orders, to helm orders to the helmsman. And anyway, this is where the officer of the deck and the junior officer of the deck was. This was the captain's chair. As depicted by the CO for commanding officer. Anyway, he had his own set of instruments. So when the kamikaze pilot hit the ship, yes. was this area affected? No, uh, but it could have been. The uh, This ship has got the proud record of no matter how badly she was hurt to finish the job before she went in for repairs. When she went in for repairs, the uh, area that was hit was also what we call secondary con. That's besides the bridge, you have a secondary bridge back there in case this is ever wiped out. Well, that's where it was, it was hit. And so it wiped out, but it's my understanding that when she got in for repairs, the uh, yard looked at this and said, okay, the ship is hit here. You saw a flash out there. I did. Yeah. You saw the corner of my eye? Out, out, out there? Yeah. So, yeah, you because know, I could see the deck lit. But anyway, it's uh, said that the kamikaze hit here, the bridge is here. Had the, had the kamikaze hit maybe 15 feet further up, it could have taken out both of them. And so since after that, in, in the early 50s, when the ship was modernized, they moved secondary con from there to uh, farther away. They couldn't do it because there was a war going on. Do you think that kamikaze knew what it was trying to hit to take out both? I don't think so, uh, because there, there, there's every indication that he might have. You don't know what's going through the guy's mind, and I don't care to. Uh, but I think he was just lined up, and I don't know if he was even alive by the time he hit, you know. So it's, it's, it's really hard to tell. I, I couldn't, I, I did just guesswork on my part. Hey everybody, it's Colin here. Welcome to the Paranormal Files. Tonight we are on the USS Lexington. This is known as one of the most haunted ships in the US. Definitely a place that's always been on my bucket list here in Texas. But before we start tonight's investigation, I just want to remind everybody that every time we premiere a new video, we give away a free gift bag of Paranormal Files merchandise to people online. So if you want a chance to win that gift bag, all you have to do is like our video and comment, I love the Lexington below. I'm gonna give you all 10 seconds to do that right now. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five four three two one so yeah liking the video commenting subscribing that helps all these productions and investigations that we do do better on youtube and it helps grow the family but we're gonna hop right into the investigation right now before we go to the rest of the interview and we're currently up 
in the, what is this area called, Bill? Navigation Bridge. This is the Navigation Bridge. So this is where the ship would have actually been um, steered from. Here's the, the wheel right there. I don't know if it's called the wheel, but. Okay, let's. Uh... Hey everybody, <laughs> Jeff here. Navigation Bridge, is this the same Navigation Bridge, Bill, up here? What is it? It's All the one? Well, I'm sorry, this, uh, this part is Pilot House. That's the uh, bridge. Okay, so the Pilot House and the bridge were up and um, it's where the, like, oh, there's a <laughs> got yep, ball going I just on. Saw that. But yeah, just uh, also really the battery honored. just dropped to one bar. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well. Well, your cat ball's been going off over here. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not now, but it was. Yeah. It's been. I mean, it's so, weird because we're standing yeah. right here by them yeah. too. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, look at that. that. See how that goes there? Look at that. Well, I had Bill. looked and that thing started going off. Yeah. <laughs> look at how he's doing this. No, you can't, you can't, anyway. So I would just say, you know, that we're really honored to be here, obviously, at the USS Lexington, and everyone who served, obviously. My father included all my aunts, uncles, Bill. Just excited to see what we might, we might get, respectfully. And I, I do want to say that we set up our cat balls in the REM pod, and all of the cat balls have already been, I don't know what you would call that, lighting up. Look at that right there. Yeah, you just don't even know. These have all gone off up here too. Okay, so to any entities, spirits, energies on this ship, my name is Colin. I'm Jeff. Here with my dad. We just want to talk to you and communicate with you tonight. You can show us that you're here in any way that you can. You can knock on things, move things. We have equipment here, like the little balls that are set around this room, like this one. If you touch it, it'll light up. You can uh, let us know you're here like that, but um, like always, how we like to start, I just want to ask, is there anybody here with us? Could you give us a sign by maybe touching one of these toys that we have set up? You turn the ovulus on as yeah. well. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye immediately. Is there somebody up here in this part of the ship with us? Hey man, uh, oh, that's a radio just so they yeah. know. That's a sound effect that's played in the ship. Sound almost like it said Bill <laughs> at the end there. Is anybody here though on the ship right now? Follow us because we would love to talk to you tonight. If you're up here, if you're in this area, if you can hear our voice, follow us. So, uh, yeah, okay. let's do this. Okay. I'm really sweaty. Okay, we're right above where the kamikaze hit. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Well, we'll have to probably get into somewhere kind of quiet. Yeah. Or, you know, to try to do a little sound and capture somewhere. Sure. If you guys are up here, we can go up the low decks. It's out of the wind and everything. Yeah, I think yeah. that's I yeah. ideal now. I have to show you our escalator. It doesn't work. That's very Look at go. Did you get a picture of it? It's right there. Look at. I know, but this, this is where we're from, South Dakota. That's yeah. what's so strange. <laughs> and we've got um, a few of the turrets, guns, and like yeah. the anchor and stuff left in a park. It doesn't look much like this no. because apparently you found. Yeah, it's less so here, but just to let you know that uh, if we're going to get touched. It's usually in here or mostly on the other side. They've got an adjoining room. Uh, anyway, people and spirits in there like to touch you. Hmm. Anyway, this is called a battle dressing station. Uh, this is the last one intact that we have here. And of course, you can see it hadn't been used for a while, fortunately. 
But we had these stationed throughout the ship because in case of battle, um, you had injuries, you had all sorts of things. They would bring the injured in here to, to, for temporary pasting, but try to put them back together, you know, long enough to survive the trip up to the mess deck. That's where you got your stuff set up right now. But that would be the uh, triage area for sick bay, which was behind that. They'd come on in here, they'd be temporarily fixed. That's me. Um, was it? Oh, you heard a different sound? Yeah. Pull well, that. Huh. Like a squeal. Hmm. Did you? What is that? I just heard it again. Oh, that. Yeah. What is that? Anybody else hear it? Yeah. Oh, you do? What is it? I, I don't know what that'd be. That's, it's coming, it sounds like it's coming from like above us or that direction. Yeah, I'm hot. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is down here, is that in the passageway? Uh, get a lot of activity out there, it's footsteps. I'll put out uh, motion sensors as perimeter alarms. Those things would be going off. Uh, it's fairly active out there, and voices. But anyway, to get back to the uh, battle dressing station, if they were injured, they would come in here for, for temporary fixing. Now, sometimes they would get in here and just not make it out. This, this is where it would start. Now, if it was uh, kiss it and make it better sort of thing, they'd just kiss it and make it better, then send them back to his, his battle station. Sometimes it was not life-threatening, but it's something that you couldn't send them back to work, like a broken arm, broken leg, something like that. Anyway, they would put them out there in the passageway until such time as you could get assistance going on up there, because they would take the worst cases and call up a stretcher bearer, put them on stretcher, and then take them up to the aft mess decks. Anyway, that's what these are for. We've had people come in and set up recorders, and what they get is, 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 is voices that could be like the medics or stuff like that, but they're nothing we've ever ever been able to interpret but you get a lot of moaning uh, stuff that is where somebody's really hurt i don't doubt that there's been some people come in here that died because the guy that gets some guy in here would, would have to make that er terrible decision you get somebody in here that he knows is going to die then you have somebody behind him that you might salvage i mean what do you do then you know it definitely feels way different back here yeah well if, if you follow the uh, paranormal uh, paranormal uh, paranormal uh, paranormal theory that you leave an imprint wherever you go think of the agonizing near-death stuff that they've had in here think of that the living and the hard decisions they had to make now the most dramatic thing I ever had was at a uh, film crew come in here and there were there was a, a bunch that were like eight of us in here and that door was right where it is right now then all of a sudden it just slammed it, it, instead of slamming shut it slammed up against that bulkhead back there wow and it, it was it was hard i mean it just wasn't easy it was hard you saw everybody in here that's when i knew that eight people could levitate all at the same time <laughs> So you said also lots of death and suffering in this room. Without a doubt. But again, this is just one of many that we had about the ship because we had to have, we had several of these so that, that if somebody was injured, they could get care uh, as quickly as we could give it to them. Well, where should we set? Is this the area we're gonna set up or? Yeah. I'm if like sweating like, like a crazy. Here, yeah. Let's do it, yeah. Okay, everybody. So we're gonna begin our investigation in this portion of the Lexington. This is where a lot of people died. A lot of medical procedures were done here. This is kind of like the trauma unit almost, where if you were wounded in battle, right when I start saying those things, the flashlight. And I set up this flashlight to do the flashlight method right before we started recording and it already turned on. We've already just been hearing some noises back here. I'm gonna turn, adjust this one. It's the music box. All right, so we're in the pitch black yeah. down here. Uh, uh, what? Oh, something touching my hair. What is this? Jesus. It's creepy back here, yeah, man. It's... To anybody down here, anybody whose spirit may have stayed behind after you died, my name is Colin. I'm Jeff. We're here to talk with you. It got colder. Do you feel that or am I just mm. dreaming out? 
I've been like sweating all night. If I, I left my, ca- I can feel some air behind me. Yes. But, you know, the thing is, is we should have brought the temp gauge. You know, I feel. Oh, I have like chills, kind of on my arms. If there's somebody down here, can you let us know? We're inviting you in. Anyone that's traveled back here to visit, we're, we're friendly. Thank you for your service. We're just wanting to know that you're here. If you are here, let us know by a noise, a voice. If you see that red light in the hallway right there, if you can hear us and you can see that red light, walk over towards it, the little red ball over there. There's also a flashlight over there that you can play with if you'd like to. Come walk over here. Because I can't see what's in front. Oh, there's a pole. Watch out for your head. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Gosh, where are they, bud? We got my. Can you knock like this? Somewhere to let us know where you are. Can you use your voice and let us know where you are? Hey guys, we are here on the USS Lexington. We came to visit you. We'd like to know that you're here. You maybe come back to visit. Total respect for you. Thank you for your service, but could you let us know you're here by a knock or noise or voice? I definitely don't feel though like a creepy, you know, I almost feel like a like, definitely obviously older, you know, for me, older energy, but it's like a, a mixture of all the stuff, camaraderie to, you know, people dying, suffering, lonely. I kind of feel like homesick, I guess would be my feeling. Anybody here, could you please let us know you're here? If you can move something, shut one of the doors, go play with one of our devices, touch one of the lights that we set up, then we would know you are here and we can talk, have a chat. I don't think I've sweat this much I know. in years. I grab the other camera. Oh, dude! She's too hard to walk in there. Jeez. Gotta find all these walls and everything. Can I just sit here for a second? Yeah, that's what I was saying you should do. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Get it, get it, Yep. Okay, first time. Thank you so much. Could you do that again if that was you? Mm-hmm. Like after we sat, right? Okay, we're gonna stand, sit, and talk. Since you just touched that red light over there, there's a flashlight right next to that. 
Could you touch the flashlight as well? You can also use your voice. Don't want you to be afraid of us. We're not afraid of you. You hear that? What was that? Like a boom. Did you die on this ship? I hear that. It's not like it came from up here. Yeah. What is that? I just saw a flash of light. Did you see that? Where? Where? Right behind us, a flash of light. Okay, I've been thinking like I've been seeing kind of like some shadows. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I definitely have felt like I've seen here. I know we have some shadows, but, I'm, you know, movement. I know I definitely smell an evil smell. Ooh, I wouldn't say evil. Well, it's my armpit. Oh. That's <laughs> a joke. Okay. Because <laughs> it's really sweaty. It's, it's a joke. Okay. <laughs> Can you make another sound over here? That's my shit. I think you responded by saying, yes, you did die in here. Could you, one more time, go touch that red light if, yes, you passed away in here? here and you can come talk to us I'm gonna turn on a piece of equipment in a second and by using that we might be able to hear your name if you talk to us or hear what you have to say Keep walking towards us. That was very chilling. Yeah. I keep seeing that. I feel like you're down there. 
I'm gonna turn on this device. So, can you tell us your name? I died. It sounded like you said died really? immediately. Yeah, I just asked that like three times. So you did die here? What was your name? Can you do that again, please? You made a noise right behind me before, right here. It's on the other side of that. <laughs> is, that a, is that a door? So what is it? Inside, maybe? No. Out. Yeah. I... It sounded like died again. Almost I. Could you try tell us your name, please? Go. Go. I'm gonna ask you one more time. Could you please tell us your name? Yeah. What was your role on the ship? Can you tell us that? Upstairs, and up on all the of the cables are going off. And like, not one has gone off here. It just shows that it's like, you know, valid, and we have you like know? seven, eight laying out here. We have like two yeah. over there, one really close to us, right yeah. there. Right. Other room. Yeah, I mean, nothing. Not one of them has gone off once. Even like the REM pod, the music box, yeah. the flashlight. The REM pod went off once. Why are you being quiet? Hey. <laughs> you. Does it get lonely back here? I do. Play. I thought it said I do play. Mm -hmm. What What do you, if, if that's what you said, I guess, I do play. Come out and play with us then. And oh, I got see that do you red. Feel that cold breeze. That that's red light there light. again. Can you go over there and touch that? No. Yeah, I'm gonna step over here. Okay, Colin's not here, so... Can you show me again? It looked like you were like a shadow that came in front of my camera. Is there somebody back here with me? Who's back here in this part of the ship? Can you, once again, just let us know where you are? Because we want to talk to you, but we can't talk unless we know that you're here. I'm gonna come back here with you. Okay. It's really quiet. You know, it's like it's loud for a second and then Really quiet. Here, I gotta try this. Oh, 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 immediately. Like the first time. That's the first one down here. Okay, somebody in here, it's pointing right over that way. Can you do that again? I know you've done it once, I appreciate it. We're not gonna keep asking you, but this is a room I know that many of you came or got brought in because you're oh, because you were not feeling well and you might have even died in here. You know, thank you. It's 
so quiet, you know? What the hell? Okay, wait a second. The can't your camera. Your camera just, what, did it die? Well, it just went off. <laughs> I mean, what I mean, what I mean, what, oh. what should I do? Close it and open it? Yeah. Okay. What? It just shut off. What's up with all this? But look at the battery's fine. Yeah. Look at the battery. Okay, that's freaky, man. That's weird. Did you guys play with my camera here? That's fine. You can do it again if you want. Can you make that light or play with this music box again like you did? <laughs> Did you see that picture you just took? <laughs> this selfie hold up. <laughs> that is hilarious, man. What, what is the that? Hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of the worst pictures I've ever seen of us. <laughs> oh, whoa, what the what? And then it was immediately oh, when I came over to film it, too. I just started filming. Did, were you filming? Yes, okay. it was literally immediately when I came over and pointed at it. Okay. If you oh man, I this is the first time I've actually had full body chills. Whew. My legs. Oh my gosh. Can you see that? Look at my hair. That's the first time. Yeah. Whew. Okay, can can you if you're here? Can you let us know, like, your name into, into one of these devices? They have uh, speakers on it. You know what those are, microphones. We can maybe pick it up later. Appreciate that, but thanks for hitting that light. Can you do more in here for us? We're friendly again. We, we appreciate you. Me too. Do you? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I feel it's kind of weird. Seasick. I'm telling you, this is probably the hottest and most tiring, right? I'm already exhausted. I know. It's like, it's, I'm drenched with sweat. Um, we've walked up and down really, like 30 flights of stairs we, today. We really should have more. Oh, it's like, okay. A different one that. too. Different ball, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's a different ball. Different ball. Oh, 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 immediately. Like the first time. That's the first one down there. The other one's over there. Thank you. That is a different ball. Right. Do you want us to stay here? It kind of smells. Do you smell something? Oh, look at this thing. This thing just keeps going. Okay. Are you are you just standing there? Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the paranormal. Is it box that way? Keep going. Keep going. Dude, the rim. I know. I the rim. Keep going. Keep going. There goes. Look at look at this. Oh, look at look at this. And the music box. Look, look at this ball. Oh, it just keeps going. Dude, I have. It literally hasn't stopped since something touched it. Oh, I. And the the rim pod. I'm literally like full body chills. I shouldn't say that we're charged, but that's, that's what I'm feeling. Charged. Look at this. This ball is... Okay. It's like it's standing right there. You know what I mean? Like it's just consistently that's setting it off. Crazy. So I heard that whoever's in this room has in the past slammed the door and you've done a lot yes. of things. Could you do something like that for us right now? Since you're obviously here, we can see that you're here. It's 
ball just doesn't stop. Okay. Yeah, I'm like bottom, dizzy all of a sudden. The bottom line is that ball right there was out here on the floor for, and it never had anything. <laughs> and now it's just like gong show. And you said that you wanted to come in here. Yeah. We want to talk to you if you're in here. Can you tell us your name? Can you say yes or hi or hello? Trying to call for your father when you died? How old were you when you died? Also, there, there should be no radio coming through in here because these yeah. walls are oh, so man. thick and yeah. it's complete metal. So that's weird to even get one voice. Uh, yeah. okay. What? Okay. Maybe I wanted to talk to you because you're my dad. You know? Oh, 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 right when I said that, right when I said that. Are you, can you say your name? I am a dad. I'm here for you. Can you tell me your name? I heard something. Oh, I'm getting it again. Oh, I'm feeling like energy. Okay, so I'm Colin's dad. Were you in this room? <laughs> it stopped and it started again. What is your name? Can you tell me your name so we know who you are? Um, can you just tell me if you served on this ship? What is off with uh, this damn ball? It came from the uh, hallway where it did nothing. Um, we should put something over there and set it. I'm gonna move this. Okay. I'm gonna put the race. I'm gonna put the race. Okay, if you're over, oh, 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 look at, look at, for the first time it's actually going off. I just heard a footstep over here too. I was about to say that. Look at this. Wow. Well, I'm not sure. This literally hasn't gone off. No, I know. There it goes. <laughs> Are you in this room over here? Oh, okay. This thing is just too loud. Yeah. Are you over here? Wow. Look at this. This hasn't gone off all night. I reset oh, everything. What, do we bring the um, SOS? Yes. We gotta get that. Make sure now. That's crazy that this thing hasn't gone off at all. Can you give me a sign that you're in this room? Maybe knock on something. Okay, if you are sitting over here, I'm in the pitch black with you. I thought I just heard like a... Can you use your voice and talk to me, please? Tell me your name if you're over here. Oh, oh the, the ball again. I'm gonna reset this thing. 
And the ball only went off for like a tiny bit that time. Dude, this music box is picking something up over here. Who's in this room? Is there a shadow man in this room? Show me where you're at. This is not gonna hurt you, this device. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. Put this over here. Let me get up. Look at that, and over here it's not doing anything. Okay, just a second. There you go, proof. So you've got the SLS? I do. To anybody who's back here with us, my dad is holding a device, a computer, that will allow us to see you, so... Here's over there, yeah. If you want to show yourself to us, you can. We'll hopefully be able to see you. Okay, can you... There you go. I think you're in here. Do you want to just let us know you're here? You can. This just lets you kind of show up as kind of a fun figure. You could be anywhere. You could be up in the ceiling. What was that? Yeah, what was that? That was like a scratch. Uh -huh. It was like right by me, actually. Yeah. Can we move the SLS over there? Okay. Are you this way? I'm recording. Do you want to come out in the hallway and just kind of show yourself? This doesn't hurt you, it just kind of lets you tell us that you're here. If you can hear our voice, follow our voice, walk over towards us, please. Come down the hallway. We want to talk with you. Yeah, stops no, all it was like very active. You want to try and go to another part of the ship? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do oh, it. Oh, there's a oh, oh. Okay, you want us to stay? Okay. Oh, look at him. Look at like it's from the, just the ceiling, dude. Oh. Oh man, I've got totally. Oh, oh dude, oh. my arms. Oh. Look, I oh, feel that there's another one. There's another one. Oh, Ooh, I actually got chills. Actually, when that thing like dropped, immediately when that dropped. dropped in here, it actually felt like it actually went into mm -hmm. my body. Yeah. We need to just hold on one second. I am still like just. Wow. Okay, is there more than one of you guys here or women? I've got like a. Oh. All of a sudden, a headache. All of a sudden, a headache. All of a sudden, a headache. I'm like so sweaty. Oh, dude, there's another flash. I'll have it on here. What is that? What? Was that like a buzz? Like a buzz? I didn't hear it. Really? No. We're gonna go to another okay. part of the ship. Here, this is go, your last chance I'm to show yourself. See if this went in the room here, maybe. Maybe it went through us. And did you go in this room by chance? Back, is that you that was making all the noise? Maybe you're back here now. I know Colin wants to leave, so we're gonna. The ovulus. That was like the first time it said anything in so long. So this is going to be the last time we're going to be in this room. So anything further you want to say to us or show that you're here? Yeah, go. I, yeah, I thought it said, yeah, go. That's, that thing has been on the whole time and yeah. it hasn't gone yeah. off. Can you speak to us again using that little black box? Okay, this is it. Okay, we're in the, one of the little infirmaries. <laughs> infirmaries. <laughs> Getting kind of tired already. Can you show us that you're here? You you showed us before, and we're gonna, we're leaving to go to another part of the ship. Yeah, to whoever's been down here talking to us, thank you so much. But um, we're gonna pack up our stuff and go to another part of the ship now. 
Thank you, though. Yeah, I think it's time. The moment that I turn this stuff off. Oh, dang it. Oh, no, 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 no. Quick, 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 quick. Is it on? Yes. Look at this. Right when we're getting packed up to leave. We're going to be leaving. Or is that you showing us that you're here? That has not gone on oh. once. Ooh, I got, that, got, on, I got that on that camera, too. Right when I turn the devices off. Look at that. I know. Oh, that oh, hasn't God. gone off at all. Do you not want us to leave? I'm gonna turn this off. Or do you want us to leave? Are you happy that we're leaving? Okay, let's get out okay. of this part. Yeah. Hey. Okay. I can feel the old knee. That's wrong, man. I got that on camera. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> this ladder is stable and everything, but it kind of leans back a little bit, so it's going to give you a funny feeling going okay, down. Okay. I don't need any more funny feelings. <laughs> Jump up, you're going to have to duck, my man. Good. This is a small door. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's very good. good. That's from the Shire. <laughs> just the brick. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so can you kind of just explain where yeah. we are and what people we're, are? We're in the ship's brig, which is the uh, ship's jail. Anyway, these cells might be used like if a rowdy drunk came back, back at night, he could sleep the night off in here. But also, if somebody committed a serious offense at sea, or a series of minor offenses, it didn't matter. It just, whenever the captain was fed up with this guy, they could put him in here to serve punishment. Now, every sailor is important. Every sailor's got a job, every sailor's got watches, stuff like that. If he's not there, then other people have to pick up the slack, which is a burden on the rest of them. So the captain would not put somebody in here for punishment unless he absolutely had to. Now the punishment back then, it, it had to be harsh and, and short. So the Navy and the Marine Corps were the only two services that, that uh, could award three days bread and water. So they would put them in here and that's what they would get is just bread and water. But the punishment went on from there. And now three days bread and water is harsh enough, but they had nothing to sit on in there except the deck. Whenever it came time at night to, uh, to sleep, they would put a bunk in there, a rack, but it was like five minutes before taps, and then right at Revley, they would take them on out. So the guy wouldn't, the only place he could sleep during the day is on the steel deck. He was not allowed to talk. He had no reading material. All he could do was sit there and think about his bad deeds and how he was gonna get better. And it worked. Three days bread and water usually did, did the job. Down here, what I get a lot of is murmuring. Because like I said, they couldn't talk. So if they had a, if, if, if there was no ventilation down here, so if a petty officer on watch down here was getting groggy and not paying attention to what he was doing, uh, they could actually whisper back and forth, but that's what we'd get is murmuring and whispering, no loud speaking voices. In the passageway, I get a lot of movement in the passageway and I can't explain that. Uh, down at the end, down there, I get the sound of people standing and shuffling. It, it's, it's odd. But then we get uh, sounds of stepping here and there. In the Navy, it's, it's, it's gotten more strict there, but uh, as a chief petty officer in the Navy, if I had somebody that wasn't towing the line, there was a lot of things I could do. Uh, like have him work a couple hours after dark or after liberty or not give him his liberty card, letting him go ashore or, or different things. There's different things I could do, which progressively got harsher as time went on and the guy still didn't square away. Uh, usually by the time I gave him a wire brush and brought him down to a fire room, which is where the boilermen were, the guy pretty much knew that that, that was the end of the line before he, he wound up in the brig. There was a lot of things that, that we could do that to just try to correct his behavior. 
Sometimes all it would do is take one act, such as disrespect to a senior or assault on a senior. You know, we have uh, uh, Navy jails ashore, but if, when you're at sea, you got to take care of that problem now. So usually it was three days bread and water, but I've never seen it fail to work. I'm not saying his attitude changed, I'm just saying his behavior changed, and that's what we were looking for anyway. Well, how do you spell uh, Brig? B R I G. <laughs> I was just thinking there might be another G in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most simple word. Well, believe me, I, 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 I'm a simple guy. Well, you want to set some stuff up? What do you think? Yes. I'm, really I'm trying to see the sweat. Yeah. Get it in all the glory. <laughs> Dripping off my mustache. So we're now in the brig area um, where people were held when they, you know, committed bad deeds or were unruly on the ship. Jeff has a just K2. K2. We've got some, a REM pod, some cat balls set up, and I'm gonna start a voice recorder. Okay, this is rolling. Oh, I'm gonna set this in here. Okay. So, if you're down here in the brig area, I think you've already seen the flashlight. All you have to do is use your energy to complete the circuit and turn the flashlight on. You just have to go touch it, grab the flashlight. You can speak. Oh, there is a motion capital. But yeah, we also have a voice recorder over here, a tape recorder that oh, we can hear your voice on. So I think you're already playing with this flashlight. Can you turn that off if you were the one who turned it on a couple seconds ago? right now and if you were held here in the brig at one point could you connect that circuit and turn the flashlight on So much. That right yeah. Can you turn that back off so we can ask you another question? Okay. Once again. Okay. Once again. Okay. Once again. Thanks for using your energy. Oh, thank you. I did that last time. Yeah. That's why I was kind of my head was telling me it's gonna it's asking me to, to ask. Ask a question. Weird. Mm -hmm. how, how do you want to do that? What was ask it to tap beep. What was ask it to tap beep. What was ask it to tap beep. And turn on. Yeah. Okay, so I want if you're here, it sounds like you are, and if you're happy here, can you? Complete that circuit, use your energy, and turn the light on for us. Let us know that you're happy here. Okay, that happened right before we Yeah, it, it, it keeps okay. happening right after we ask questions. Okay, and so if you are happy, keep using your... Thank you. I got like... I'm totally charged again. Colin, I'm actually feeling the same energy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing that. 
sounds like you're happy, so could you turn that ball off and the light off again for us? And then we won't bother you anymore on that? Step away from both of those. You can come out of the cells if you want to. Okay, there you go. Yep. There you go. Let it go. Yep. Let your energy go. Come towards us. Let your energy Gosh, go. Cold. There you go. Let it go. I straight up just felt air like shoot past my neck. Boy. Okay, so maybe, oh, maybe they want something more. Yeah. What would we? Okay, I'm gonna start a new session. Yeah. Okay, if you're standing right here, can you tell me your name? you sent down here to the brig. Did it make you mad when you got sent down here? Thank you for the response. Can you turn that off? We understand that you're you're happy here, but you weren't happy about being brought down here. Can you just uh, tell us maybe what you did? Like, fight or... No? You don't want to do that? No. Okay. Oh, you did. Um, how about, did you... Would it, would it be if they fought that it would do that? Maybe as a response? Yeah. Probably. So you were put in here because you, you fought with somebody? We know what you were given down here. Can you tell us what you were given to eat? Questions. Oh, both times. Yeah. Turn the light on when I tell you what you were given. I want to know if that's what you had when you were here. Were you given coffee? Were you given lemonade? Were you given soda? Really? So, did somebody sneak you soda when you were down here? It's like, I mean, it just shows you like, there's... Can you turn off the light? I want to ask you another question. Thank you. I'm going to start this. And, uh, there we go. Okay, anybody that wants to say anything in here, please do.
on here? Can you turn the light on if they gave you bread to eat? If they gave you, did they give you more than bread? Like again, snuck it down? Interesting. So, what else did you get besides bread when you weren't supposed to? You got soda, and then what else to eat? Say it into this device. It's interesting, maybe that's why they're saying they were happy. Because they were snuck stuff and they were down here. I bet like, what's going through my head is that you had friends of yours that were kind of in charge of the brig at least who we're communicating with. Did you have like friends that snuck you? Did they sneak you soda and other food? That's pretty freaky. <laughs> and I am like, again, charged. <laughs> yeah, I am. No, but yeah. Wow. Wait, I have a question. Can you turn the light on if you weren't someone who was in the brig, but somebody who Turn the light on if you were some. Turn the light on if you were some. Turn the light on if you were some. Somebody who, mm -hmm. I was gonna say, mm -hmm. um, oversaw the break. Cause I could explain them eating better and being happy, having yeah. some power and yeah. stuff. I don't know though. It's a hard one to sort out. Who we're communicating with, if you actually were in one of these breaks, kind of as a prisoner for three days, is that who we're talking to? If so, turn the light off for me and tell me your name in here. Hmm. If you were an officer that oversaw the break, can you turn that light off and then tell us your name? Let me get this straight then. You were happy down here? You were an officer. You had soda and, and other food. Yeah, okay. Right when I said that too. So it's actually not someone in the brig, but actually maybe overseeing them. Yeah, they would have had, you know, whatever wow. food and drink they wanted, I guess. As opposed to bread and soda, water. More than bread. Well, thank you so much. Wow. There you go. Can you turn that light off? I have one more question for you. Go off. Step away from it. You got it. Thank you for trying. It's like not turning it off. I think we're bothering it. I was gonna say, is there anything that you still want us to know about you? Just speak it into the into the hallway. And whenever you're done talking, let go of the light and we'll be done. Yeah, let's, let's move on. Wow. I grab it? I'm really excited to hear that back. I'm gonna grab the yeah. flashlight. Oh, that feels good. Oh, yeah, this is an old Navy phrase for this. This area we would call the key dunk. It's where sailors can come down and, and buy, not buy, but oh, get right uh, ice cream and stuff like that out okay. there. But I was bringing two brothers from Kingsville in here. There was nothing special. We were coming through and all of a sudden all of their gear started going off. We've had a lot of stuff just mysteriously happen in here. One morning uh, I got a call from my boss saying when you were on investigation last night uh, did, did you go up into the staff area which is up there? I said no, got no business up there. Why? He just said well the captain was asking. It's like anyway I came aboard the next morning and the first thing I heard was hey the captain wants to see you. I thought, oh, cold crap, what did I do now, you know? But anyway, it turned out that uh, he went into his office. A lot of the stuff was stripped down from the walls and everything else. The place was, a, was trashed. He looked at his, his footage on his computer, his security footage, and realized that nobody was in there. But he knew that I was down here at that time because when we were coming through and everything started going off, we had flashlights going everywhere, and he saw that shining up through there. So anyway, then he showed me, God bless it. Ready? 
You can see it coming on up. Oh, that. Okay, look at that. That's pretty. Yeah. That's very, but that, very but it, that was at the mm -hmm. precise time that all of our stuff was oh, happening down yeah, here. Yeah. And what impressed me was, was the uh, camera that caught it. Well, it's up there, you'll see a little black ball. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, there. that's motion detection. And so it had to have sufficient mass to trigger that thing. Ah, oh, interesting. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, for sure. I have another picture to show you for the heck of it. Well, you know where you've been going to the head down there? This picture was taken. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Really? Yes. Oh that is gosh. very scary. <laughs> it is. Wow. Oh. Oh, I got like. Yeah, that's yeah, that every good. Time I, look at this, I get chill bumps. Yeah. But that's that's uh, wow. that, that's actually by the air boss, which is right next to the ops boss. Wow, that is a creepy picture, man. <laughs> Just what I want to see before we go into the dark. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you think that's bad. Well, um, in sick bay, this picture was taken. Oh, oh wow! God. Look at the yeah, the hand face. too. Yeah, and a hand. Oh my gosh! That was on the ship in the yeah. That's that's, that's in our sick bay. In the sick bay. Now that bunk wow. that uh, he's hiding behind. The Roku TV investigators were here and they were doing it. And when they got to sick bay, their SLS showed a figure by the bunks. And so they put one of their uh, perimeter sensors and they put one in there and kept saying, go get in that bunk, get in that bunk. Well, they, the sensor went off. Okay. So whatever it was, tried to get into the bunk. But that's also where that showed up, that oh, same bunk. That's creepy. <laughs> it's a, I will it's say a that creepy picture. I will say that last one though was the super girl, creepy. Yeah, yeah. That one's creepy. I have women get around here and they smell shampoo, lilac, different senses around this. I mentioned that because I had a different investigative group come through and we smelled shampoo real strong. So we followed it up there and then we finally found the head where it was really intense in there, but mm. that head hasn't been used in years. Okay. Yeah. A shower head. A shower, well, yeah, uh, a head is a bath bathroom, a restroom. Oh, a head, okay. Yeah, with, with showers in there. Gotcha. Anyway, when Roku came through here, they looked on up there and they saw an SLS figure sitting at the top of that ladder. Yeah, so I said, well, just keep filming that while I go on up. So I head on up, they said, okay, he's standing up. Okay, he moved back into the passageway. Okay, he's going to our left. But by the time I got up there, there was nothing there. Hmm. But they watched him the whole time. Anyway, okay. that's a quickie here. <laughs> yes, no, that's cool. I love this. Those pictures are awesome. Yeah, those pictures yeah. are. Shout out to the video. That's the video. This is a break room. We uh, we also do a tour on here called a hard hat tour, where you have to wear safety gear, but we take you down to the places nobody else goes. Okay. And it's a pretty, pretty hard tour. And so we use this as a halfway break room. But I had uh, four brothers from Ingleside in here one time. I want to say one of them was sitting just about there. And he had his SP7 going with him right there. That's where he was getting the female voice through the SB7 that also gave the name Priscilla. And that's when another guy turned on the uh, SLS and saw her figure standing. Right here? Right, yeah, but, but it looked like she was leaning forward, like she was looking at the SB7. Okay. Wondering what that was. And anyway, at some point she says, I have to go. But they kept talking, trying to get her to state because uh, they had more questions. But she, uh, she started off, so that guy stood up there and grabbed his SB7 while the other guy followed with his SLS. She came through here around there and went through that bulkhead over there. You, you could see that I was, I was falling behind him looking at both of them huh. and she went right through there. You could wow. see that the stick figure vanishing through there. <laughs> so I thought, I wonder if there was a door over there at one time. So I, I checked it out and uh, on the other side, there's a steel plate welded on there. Oh. So there could very well have been a door at one time. Okay. Wow. Because most spirits I find go through a place where there was a door. Right. They just don't make sense. one on their own, yeah. <laughs> this was electrical repair. I don't have ship's records because those were shipped off when the ship decommissioned in 1991. We interview all the old timers that come aboard and they know of a female an electrician that was down here worked while repairing something. She was by herself, but she was electrocuted to death. And they just found her slumped over, you know, but- Oh, hold on, don't move. Uh, I, got a, I got a figure already right there. Look at that. Look, at he's there. <laughs> oh my gosh. So oh, I've got it's totally, right there. I have total, my arms again are just lit up. 
That's the same. Isn't that the same chair? Oh, it could be the same chair. Oh my gosh. Priscilla, is that you? No, you know what it is? Uh, it's it's that over there in the corner. Oh. Yeah, because those chairs aren't yeah. really like that. Yeah. So it's a reverse image. It is, and there's the panel above it. Can you stand up out of the chair? See, it's in the corner. Oh, oh it almost did. Almost did. We're, we're not... Uh, we're not... Oh, oh, oh my oh. gosh, that's crazy. Yes, thank you. Can you stand up all the way? Are you recording this? Yep. Good. That's right. Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh. Oh. Look, I asked it to stand up all the way and it it's, literally got out of the chair. Oh, it got out. I, I, wow, that was crazy. Shoot it's that crazy that you got that huh? quick. Shoot that hey, way. Oh yeah. Here, I'm going to see if it see if we walked over it. there. Did you come over this way? You were listening to Bill tell your story. Oh, oh shoot, my, it just yeah. glitched. Look at this. What? Oh, I you got a lot of glitchy mitts. Look at this. Seriously. What? Freaking totally glitched out on me. Right when this was all happening? What the heck? I've never seen it do what this either. What is this? Hey, so you might have been playing with this, I guess, huh? But again, if that were you and you moved over this way, you're still here. Show yourself again for us, if you would, please. That was super cool. That was crazy. Just yeah, right when you were telling me about the chair. And how you're probably sitting there watching us come in. Right. Have you are you still here? Because we're gonna be done here, but you can show up if you want. I think I'm gonna point over here for some reason. I don't know why, but we've had activity, uh, especially since we started building a new exhibit, we've had these changes. And in the paranormal, with changes, sometimes comes activity. Here, I'm going to come back on you. Stay there. And sometimes they'll interact with uh, Bill. You're around here, so can you just hold your arms out to the side a little bit? Yeah. Let me just. There, near your map. Okay. If you're if you're here, can you go over by Bill and show yourself? Want to be in the cruise boat with me? You got an offer from Bill. Uh, that's the only time I got a beautiful body. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got a great looking stick. <laughs> that, that doesn't well, really yeah, sound yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's gone. I got the great well, stick and you got the glittery balls. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got a that's crew, great. man. Wow. <laughs> that's really good. Well, that, that was real. Okay. Did you have one more place that's more active room? that we could go to? Uh, Anything that would be what? We can try a sick bay. I think that'd be yeah. a good place to yeah. go. Sick bay would be, especially when you have that creepy picture. As, look, look, look. Creep, creepy A triple F. Anyway, a woman, older woman, had this camera that looked like a 35 millimeter, but it was electronic as a gift. And she was trying to figure it out. And her three boys, it was her birthday gift, three boys were with her. And supposedly she took a picture through here and saw a sailor talking on that handset. Oh, really? Yeah, and it freaked her oh, out. Right there. Yeah. 
Anyway, we tried to get the picture, but she uh, she was so freaked out she, that she destroyed the whole thing. At one time, somebody had an SLS and they put it through there and they saw a stick figure over by that phone. Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. is that a hint? Yeah, that's a hint. <laughs> <laughs> he had that look in his eye. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah working with the two of you. If I, okay. you know, <laughs> I already told you you had a nice stick, so yeah. come on. Dumb and dumb. There we go. Huh. The heck happened there? Hmm. Um, for some reason, you're not getting this away. to record. Oh. Colin, you might have to just, uh, there. My button came up. Where's my. Okay. Another equipment glitch? Well, it kind of appears oh. to be that way. Why don't you show up for us? Can you operate that handset? Sound powered phone, you got you know how to use a sound powered phone. Okay, we're gonna leave, so it's your last chance. Show us you're there, come on. Okay. Yeah. I wanna play. What's the smell that is like very prevalent in here? What do you smell? It's like a very sharp chemically. Uh, my wife has been on all of one of my ships. She, we were having lunch to get together on one of my ships and she said, you know, all your ships smell the same. And I asked her about that and she said it smells like oil, sweat, and paint. Hmm. Uh -huh. Straight. Oops. Straight. Whoa. Wow. But the bunk. Ooh. It's that one right there where the uh, where they put the perimeter alarm that sensed it, and they 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 had an SLS figure here, and that over there is where that face came out. Uh, where, where's the face? It was Right the, there. The, the face, the one I showed you, gotcha. yeah, would, would be over there. Long. So this area was basically medical procedures and... No, it was uh, people that couldn't, too sick or, or too injured to, to return to work, but had these bunks here and it had, uh, I think they had like 24 bunks. They had some over here, but we took those down to just make more room. Anybody down here? We're going to be done pretty soon, so if you want to show that you're here, show up for us. Pretty quiet. Yeah, I think it's a pretty quiet. The, yeah. The oh, 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 yes. Hold on. Oh, shoot. No, I'm recording. It looks like he's trying to get yeah, from one bunk to it? another. Are you trying to get up in the bunk? Jump up in that bunk. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to do is get up in that bunk. Go ahead. Oh, oh. Which are you trying to jump over to the bunk? Oh, look at that. It's like getting in the bunk. Go ahead and jump in that bunk. No, it looks oh, like you're doing gosh. it. Holy <laughs> gosh. Yeah. Just about there. After all that work, go ahead and lie down in there. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't have been done better. Okay. <laughs> Bedtime, literally. Bedtime. Yep. Thank you. It looked like he tried wow. to get that bunk and he finally made it. It looked like it. <laughs> have a good night. Rest <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, so to whoever's here in this part of the ship, in the bunks, I know some people have gotten pictures of y'all. We just want to ask you a couple questions and then we're going to let you guys go to bed. You can speak right here into this box I'm holding in my hand. What is, uh, what's your name? It sounded like one of the bunk beds yeah, creaking. Right yeah. This one's the one that the SLS just crawled into. Yeah. Because it's reversed. I have to change that actually. Yeah, same bunk. It's 
Are you up there on that bunk right now? Where the figure was. Idea. Can you get up on that top bunk once again? Were you happy when you were on this ship? Are you still happy now? Did you die on this ship or did you die somewhere else and you chose to came back? Chose to come and you chose to come back. Any final words? Time for me to. I think so. I think it's the clue. Like, no, everyone's ready to go. To I am okay. exhausted right yeah. now. Oh, me too. Like my feet are like swollen. Me too. From so much walking. Yeah. Well. Well. Great investigation. Yeah, it is. So what do we wrap up out there? Look at those old retina scopes, ophthalmoscopes. Those actually are actually are, are worth some money look, look at those wow remember oh tell everyone what you used to do before you were a ghost hunter uh well i'm still a therapeutic optometrist i still am licensed in texas and south dakota but those are for like uh, uh, looking in the eye an ophthalmoscope those with the wheels those are really old and those are very valuable these uh ophthalmoscopes like you see with the green handle mm -hmm. right here that's called ophthalmoscope the longer ones are called retinoscopes but back there on the table, with the round head, like round, see by the red case, right? The, there's okay. two black handle yeah. ones with the round heads, and the one standing up right there. Th those are valuable up to almost, you know. That's why I've got locked up. Seven, eight thousand dollars. <laughs> wow. Well, I've got a key to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for one of them. Oh, geez. <laughs> ah, the USS South Dakota. I think it was meant to be that we were supposed to come here to see I'm, this. I'm telling you, this is a pretty cool thing. Yeah. I mean, honestly, look at the only one here. South it's Dakota, South how Dakota. odd. <laughs> That's very strange, man. Well, everybody, this episode isn't over yet, but we're done tonight investigating here on the uh, USS Lexington. Been crazy. So been. much evidence. Wow. So many experiences. So many locations in one night. My feet are swollen, my shirt is soaked in sweat. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> my feet are perfect. I have no sweat at all. <laughs> when you're in top physical condition, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, No, true. very sweaty. But yeah, let's, uh, let's cut to the real ending now. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Okay, everybody, so to end this episode, obviously we were on the USS Lexington, the Navy, um, investigating some past military spirits. And to end this episode, everyone here at the Paranormal Files, Mary, Courtney, Jeff, and I, we all wanted to extend a, a massive thank you to everybody all of our viewers out there who have served in the u.s military who have protected this amazing country and who have you know given their lives for the fight and even if you didn't lose your life thank you so much but we've come here with two american flags to the coastal bend texas state veterans cemetery where 
There are a lot of veterans who've served in different wars buried. So we're gonna pay our respects here, place these flags in honor of those who died serving our country. And um, Well, my dad passed away in 1966, so I don't, I don't know specifics, but he served in the Navy uh, out, of, out of Guam. He was based in Guam. You know, I think out of my, we went through this pretty crazy. I had 20 aunts and uncles, pairs, and I think there were 12 that served in World War II, others in other wars, Korea, Vietnam. My brother-in-law, Monty, is a highly decorated Vietnam vet, fully disabled. And, um, and then, of course, I'm going to just mention my great friend who's a uh, full-blooded Lakota Sioux, Willie Bearshield, who was a tank commander in both Iraqi wars and has suffered from everything from diabetes to prostate cancer to losing all of his teeth. I mean, terrible. So, man, these guys give their lives, their health, everything. So um, a, lot of, a lot of military in my family, and uh, I respect, actually, as Colin does, all of their services so we can do all this stuff we're lucky and then again ultimately they give their life a lot of them and so yeah just a real appreciative to to my family and to everybody else that served in the military and i want to point out here that at my wedding jeff gave me his dad's wedding ring so i'm wearing that today in his honor my grandfather who i never got to meet but would have loved to you know So I'm gonna place my flag with someone who doesn't have one, and uh, actually a woman, Maria Elvira Rodriguez. Uh, she died in 2012. Uh, she was 70 years old. So a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of times give women credit being in the military. So this is gonna be for all the women that served in the military for me, okay? And uh, place it right here. In your honor, and everybody who served with you. For my flag, obviously we're planting these flags to be largely symbolic for everybody here. We found Theodore G. Perez right here. He was in the US Navy in World War II. And uh, I love the inscription, I did it my way. We obviously don't know if he served on the USS Lexington, but the Lexington was, you know, in use in World War II. The Navy was in control of the ship, so if he served in World War II on, in the Navy, there's a possibility that he could have been on that ship at some point, but this is for you, Theodore. crazy it's a lot of graves yeah so um, I, I did forget a really important piece uh, as far as other military influences in my life and in high school I lived in um, three different homes in three different cities and for reasons I won't get into but one of the uh, cities I lived in Gregory South Dakota I lived with a, a full-blooded Lakota Sioux family and uh, their father Patrick Flynn was a lieutenant colonel in the Marine Corps. Um, he flew, in a, uh, I believe, an A-4 fighter pilot. First time there were fighter jets ever was of the Korean War. So he was 6'4", Lakota Sioux, very intimidating, super nice guy. But he was a lieutenant colonel, shot down twice behind enemy lines in Korea, captured, held as a POW for months on end, and he wrote a book that's available on Amazon called Chief. It's him uh, in a flight suit in front of his A-4 plane. And I lived with him for a year and he taught me many, many lessons uh, at that time that I needed. And, um, you know, what an amazing man. If you ever want to read a book about somebody, it's an incredible story. But yeah, that's, I lived with him for a year, uh, Lieutenant Colonel in Marine Corps, John Patrick Flynn. And um, 
uh, it shows that all parts, our branches of the military are full of really a cross section of our, uh, of, it doesn't matter race, religion, whatever it may be, but, uh, but it was an honor to have lived with him for a year and I learned a ton from him.